The dictionary has hundreds of thousands of words. But in mathematics, we aren't limited by any dictionary. We, for us, the possibilities of words are endless, infinite. In this video, we're going to explore word rearrangements. So word rearrangements, let's take a quick example. How many ways are there to arrange the letters of the word apple? Apple, okay. There's A, P, P, L, E. Hmm. So, it seems like, oh, this reminds us a lot of how we could arrange some five books on a bookshelf or five objects in a line, like we explored in the permutations video. So, would it just be, we've got an A, P, P, L, E. Would it just be five factorial because five Choices for the first digit, four for the second, three for the third, two for the second, and one for the last digit. There's five factorial ways to arrange five objects in a line. Is it just five factorial? Actually, it's not. Why? Hmm. Oh, there's two P's. So these P's, they they aren't the they aren't the different. They're just P's. They're the same. So we can't just arrange. We can't just say it's 5 factorial because, for example, if we had an arrangement like A, P, let, let's just say all objects were different for a second. So let's say we have lowercase p and uppercase p, right? Then it would be 5 factorial ways to arrange the letters of the word. Because then there's 5 different letters and, well, 5 slots, so 5 factorial by our factorial formula. But Let's take a look at, for example, these two permutations, P-A-P-L-E versus P-A-P-L-E. Well, in our five factorial, we're counting these as different arrangements, right? But there's still two, the first letter is P and the third letter is a P. The first letter is a P, the third letter is a P. These arrangements, they're the same. So if we were counting 5 factorial, we would count these as two arrangements. But in reality, these two arrangements become just one arrangement. One arrangement. P-A-P-L-E. Just one. There's no two arrangements. So essentially, from all these 5 factorial arrangements, for every two, we get one valid arrangement. So 5 factorial times 1 half, which is 60. Another way of thinking about it is that amongst all five, five factorial ways to arrange the letters, there's two factorial ways for each of those five, fa there's two factorial ways to arrange the P's. So for each of those valid arrangements, there's two factorial ways to arrange the P's. So we divide by two factorial, which is just two, because flipping the P's won't create a new word. But if we had two different characters, flipping the P's does create a different word. So in general, this is a formula for word rearrangements. Essentially what it's stating is that, let's say we have n, n letters in our word. So the number of possible rearrangements, just n factorial, and let's say all the duplicates. Let's say we have two p's, three o's, and then two n's. So we would divide by two factorial for the two p's, three factorial for the three o's, and two factorial for the th two n's. So essentially, for the duplicates, we just divide by the number of that duplicate factorial. And the reason is, is because 2n's, the number of ways to arrange them, if they were different, is 2 factorial. But they're not different, so we instead divide by 2 factorial. And this formula becomes a lot simpler once you understand what it truly is. Let's try an interesting example that uses this concept. How many ways are there to arrange the letters of the word opossum if the arrangement must end in an M? These types of problems, they're easy to mess up. You, or you forget that there's two O's, you forget that there's two M's or whatever else. It's easy to forget letters, look at them differently. So the way I like to organize a word is to write it in this fashion. You start O, o opossum. So then you, as soon as you get the same letter, then you write it in the stack of O's. So O, P, O, so O, then P, then O, then S, then another S, so then I stack in the same column, then U, then M. This way, there's no way I'm missing any duplicates because I'm arranging them in an orderly fashion. 
So as you can see here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters and two O's and two S's. So how many ways to arrange these letters if it must end in an M, the arrangement? So like I mentioned earlier, there's seven characters, but the last one has to be an M. So from these remaining letters, we must now choose the first, we must now find the first six letters. Essentially, all we have to do is, is find the number of rearrangements of these letters to find what the first six letters will be. And then the last letter has to be an M because that was, that's what the problem says. It must end in an M. So essentially now, all we have to do is rearrange opasa, opasa for the first six letters and then M is last. So how many ways to rearrange opasa? Well, we can use our formula. One, two, three, four, five, six letters. So six factorial, there's two O's, so divided by two factorial. There's two S's, so divided by two factorial. This is 720 by four, or by two times two, which is four. 180, great. 180 is our answer. So the key thing here was to write our letters in an organized fashion so we didn't miss those two O's or two S's and then M has to be last so we just rearrange opasa in the first six letters and we get 180. Okay and you can check these written examples in the free Mastering AMC8 book and click on the link in the description. Let's solve this problem. How many ways are there to arrange the letters in lollipop? If the I must be next to both an L and an O. Oh, this seems like an interesting condition. I next to L and O. Hmm. Okay, let's do our standard trick of writing the letters in an organized fashion. So L, O, L, and then another L, lol, E, P, O, E. So there's two P's and there's three L's. Okay, let's try to figure out what to make of this condition. So the I must be next to an L and an O. Well, okay, an I must be next to an L. So it has to be something like I, L or L, I, right? For the I and L, for an L and I to be next to each other. But then the O must also be next to the I. So in this first case, the O must be here. And in the second case, it must be here. Aha! So for I to be next to both L and O, either O on the left, L on the right, or L on the left and O on the right. There's just two cases here. Hmm, but still, we're trying to find how many ways to arrange all the letters. How should we do this? So essentially what we're going to have is something like L, I, O, which must be together, L, I, O, this forms this kind of conglomerate. And then we have L, L, O, P, P. So we essentially got this group that must stay together. And then we've got these letters on the side. Hmm. So rather than saying L, I, O as three separate letters, let's say that this big thing is like a one giant letter or something like that. Right? Because word rearrangements, let's just say this is a big rectangle, let's say. So we can treat this as one group. And now we're arranging a rectangle, two L's, an O, and two P's. Okay, so how many ways are there to do this? Well, there's six characters. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Because the group is just one. It's one entity. Because the L, I, and O have to be together. It's one entity, the group, and then there's five more letters. So six. So six factorial ways to arrange them, but divided by two factorial for the two L's and two factorial for the two P's. So treating this as like one giant group, we got this over here as a number of ways to arrange it. Six factorial over four, 180. And it's this exact same thing if instead of L-I-O, it was O-I-L. If it was O-I-L, Again, same thing. This is one group. And then we can treat it as a word rearrangement problem. We've got six characters. 
and two uh, two L's, two P's, we get the same thing, 180 again. We add them up, we get 360. So our answer, 360. So, so there's 360 ways to arrange the letters of lollipop. So the key idea in this problem was to first write it like this, write the letters in the a word like this, the I must be next to both an L and an O. So we saw that it has to be th these two kind of groups. Because the I has only two neighbors at most. So it ha has to be OL or LO. And then we've realized that they have to stay together. So why not just say they're one big group? And then to arrange that group and, well, all the rest of the letters, it's just, well, we've got two L's and O, two P's in a group. That's 6 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. And the same thing if it was LIO. We add them up, 360. Really cool problem. The key idea was this group concept, where if we've got, let's say, AAA must be together, it's a group. AB, C must be together, it's a group. And sometimes you might have to multiply for the arrangements here. And this idea is very prevalent amongst many more content problems. Okay, so now we've been dealing with a lot of counting and permutations and combinations and word rearrangements. But what about probability? Probability is even more unique because it tells us the chance of something happening, not just the number of ways. And this is way more useful information and shows us a lot more cool problems. We'll be exploring probability right over there. Click on that video right there.